1652 BC, 2243 AM. The Great Famine ends after seven years. Joseph has enriched the Hyksos dynasty and now begins to build massive architectural monuments in Egypt, raising pyramids, temples, and embarks upon the greatest project in all Egypt outside the Giza complex, the 250 miles of canal works along the Nile. This is done in response to the Nile's failure to rise for seven years, which caused the famine. This incredibly advanced feat of ancient engineering was designed to regulate the flow of the Nile during the flood season. A massive lake reservoir system was created that also boasted productive fisheries. Even today, the locals call it Bar Jusus, or Canal of Joseph. Herodotus and Pliny both confirm the canal's origin with the Israelites. There are many places in Egypt still bearing Joseph's name. This is the 360th year from Ham's first year on the throne in 2012 BC. 1. Genesis. 2. Ancient Man. Citing Scientific American. 1639 BC. 2256 AM. Jacob, Israel, dies at age 147 in the very beginning of the year. On his deathbed he summoned Joseph and his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, who are both 24 years old. Inspired by God, the old patriarch blessed both of these young men and prophecies that these two men would father mighty empires descended from Israel in the last days. They are renamed Manasseh, forgetful, and Ephraim, doubly fruitful, and formally adopted into the Israelite family. These men were Egyptian by culture, but both Egyptian and Israelite in pedigree. Joseph is told that God has already blessed him beyond all of his sons, so the blessing passed to his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. These will become the thirteenth tribe. With Benjamin, these future nations are those referred to in Scripture as Rachel's children, the beloved of Jacob. The amazing history of these nations and empires in Europe and America will be revealed in this research. Ephraim will become the mightiest of all peoples ever seen on this earth the tribe of adoption who is, as their national seal, the Great Pyramid. The calendrics for the death of Jacob and the Abrahamic blessing, passing on to the two sons of Joseph, is fascinating. This year was 3,600 years, 600 times 6, of the Anunnaki chronology, a system of great years, each 600 years long. It was taught long ago that every 600 years a great man arises or is born. This was the year 2400 since Earth began orbiting the present Sun, and 1800 years, 600 times 3, from 3439 BC, when the watchers descended from Nibiru, heaven, to Earth. Noah was born 600 years before the Flood, in 2839 BC, exactly 1200 years, 600 times 2, before the adoption of Manasseh and Ephraim and death of Jacob. This was 600 years after the deluge in 2239 BC. Because Jacob was born 147 years priorly in 1787 BC, then he was conceived about 270 days earlier, nine months in the womb. So it's a safe assumption that he was conceived 148 years before he blessed Ephraim and Manasseh, this being 1776 months. At the death of Jacob, the Israelites assemble and follow Joseph, the Prime Minister, to Canaan to bury their patriarch. Joseph orders the Israelites to march in the funeral procession in a certain positional order around the body of Jacob, their positions serving as prophetic allusions to the distinct future geographical regions the descendants of these men would later possess in the earth. The tribes of Benjamin, Manasseh and Ephraim are positioned on the west, The procession travels to the cave of Machpelah, which Abraham bought from the Canaanites, Hittites, in 1807 BC, 168 years earlier, to bury Sarah. Joining them were 31 Canaanite kings and their retinues, who honoured the memory of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and his sons. Esau appeared at the cave and attempted to bar the burial, the brother and enemy of Jacob. A battle ensued and the conflict was evenly matched, as Esau had brought family and retainers. One of the Israelites was named Chusham, who was deaf and mute. The man ran out into the battlefield and slew Esau with a sword and chopped Esau's head off, 
just as the youthful Esau had decapitated Nimrod in 1772 BC. Joseph and the Israelites prevailed against the enemies and even took Zepho and others as prisoner who were bound in chains and taken back to Egypt. This begins the fascinating history of Zepho, the grandson of Esau, who would take the blood of Esau to the land of ancient Italy. In the chronology of Marcus Varro, according to Augustine, in the year Jacob died, the fourth king ruled Argos. This dynasty began with Inachus, then Phornios, Apis, and now Argos. This man was how the city in southern Greece got its name. Argos was not originally called by this name. Varro relates that this begins the nation of the Argives. The Argives will be famously immortalised in the pages of Homer's Iliad. 1. The Christ Conspiracy. 2. Jesher. 4. Augustine, City of God, Book 18. 1625 BC, 2270 AM. The pharaoh that elevated Joseph Diosa in Egypt died, and he is succeeded by his son Magron. He assumed the title Tutmos I, Magron, being his Assyrian Canaanite name. He too was of the Hyksos dynasty. Magron was born in 1666 BC, in the same year that Magron's father made Joseph the Prime Minister, 41 years priorly. Before his death, he asked Joseph to guide his son, Tutmos I, in his reign, and throughout his entire reign, the co-rulership between Josa, Joseph, and Tutmos I never met with any problems. The kings of Egypt regularly had five names. These would be a personal name, throne name, dynastic name, and epithets attributed for personal exploits or traits. During their co-rulership, Canaan, Philistia, and Nubia would be subdued and made to pay tribute. 1. Jasher, 2. Ages in Chaos, Volume 1. 1607 BC, 2288 AM. As the Hyksos powers waned, their power base in Mesopotamia at Mitanni, where the Amorites ruled over the Near East but were contending with the rising might of the Hittites, the sons of Esau assemble a massive army of Midianites, Arabians, Ishmaelites, people from Seir and Canaan, in a combined army of 800,000 soldiers. The Egyptians, with a small group of Israelites, go out to meet the enemy. Out on the frontier, the Egyptians are routed, leaving the Israelites behind as they flee. Fighting fiercely, the Israelites beat back the invaders. Joseph, Diosa, is victorious, and the corpses of the enemy numbered about 200,000. Though they had saved the nation, a fear of the Israelites took root among the people that would later haunt them. One of those that hated the Israelites was Zepho, grandson of Esau, who was already in his 32nd year of slavery in Egypt, after his capture in the battle over the cave of Machpelah, when Esau was killed after the death of Jacob. This was the 50th year of Israel going into Egypt in 1657 BC, 1 Jasher. 1595 BC, 2300 AM. The Hittites of Anatolia, a Japhetic empire throughout Phrygia, Caria, Asia Minor, as far as Ilium, where Troy sits, and Lebanon and Syria with garrisons into Canaan, invade Mesopotamia and overthrow the Amorite dynasty of Babylon, beginning the Hittite dynasty of Babylon. This was 270 years from 1865 BC, when Hammurabi, Nimrod, again led successful Amorite invasions into the west. This overthrow of Amorite power critically weakened the Hyksos control over Egypt and severed the aid the shepherd kings received in the administration of their empire with Assyria and Mesopotamia. This power shift was immediately felt throughout Egypt. Under Hyksos rule, the two kingdoms, Lower and Upper Egypt, prospered, and the nation had grown populous and wealthy. This new political climate brought Egyptian nationalism to the forefront. The 270 years of firmly established Amorite control of the Fertile Crescent ended, this was 90 times 3 years, or 1080 plus 1080 plus 1080 months. This was 744 years after Japheth was born before the flood in 2339 BC, 252 years from the birth of Isaac and 62 years since the Israelites had entered Egypt, or 744 months.